How to build the Blackgate's twin steam engine, part 2, the engine layout options. My advice to anyone building a steam engine, whether you're building one or two, a small one or a large one, before you do anything constructive, look at the drawing, study the drawing and read any instructions from cover to cover several times. I've decided, rightly or wrongly, to build both of these Blackgate's twin steam engines into one double unit, a four-cylinder steam engine. And as both of these are pre-machined kits, it should be a fairly straightforward job. So what's this large bit of brass? This did not come with either of the kits, I bought this separately. And thank you Nigel and Geoffrey for the Blackgate's engineering gift vouchers, it really helped. That's one kit unpacked, now for the second one. I'm taking everything except the small bolts out of the packing, and I'm going to put all these bits and pieces in a plastic box. This is one of the main standards. And I have two of these because I'm building two engines. Just a quick thought, if you want to follow this series, you need to either buy a set of castings from Blackgate's Engineering and machine them, or see how many of the part kits are left. The email address for Blackgate's Engineering is on the packaging, and I wouldn't wait too long because there aren't many of these spare parts left. I bought the large piece of brass because I have to make some kind of a base for the engine. I'm not going to cut up the piece of brass or machine it to start with, I'm just going to sit it on the bench and try different options of engine layouts on top of it. And hopefully I will eventually arrive at a layout that I will follow. Here we go then with the piece of brass on the bench, this is layout option number one. I'm using a piece of quarter of an inch diameter steel bar to make sure that these two castings are machined accurately and all line up. And thankfully the main standards line up perfectly, so I'm not going to need to do too much in this area. At first I was a little bit puzzled why the bases were chamfered at the corners as you can see here, but then it became obvious and I looked at the drawing, this part gets cut off. As a rough guess I think the chamfering was possibly to allow the castings to be held in a chuck for machining initially. So in this option I could put a shaft all the way through the centre with the flywheel in the middle, and the crank webs connecting rods and cylinders at either end. This is easily the simplest and possibly the strongest layout, but if I build the four cylinder steam engine this way, how do I drive anything with it? A leather belt around the flywheel perhaps, yes that would work, or I suppose I could fit a pulley or a gear. Here's one I found earlier, this is an old Meccano gear, I wouldn't use this but I'm just showing it for effect. Anyway, it's not really a gear, this is for driving a Meccano chain. And I have used these successfully in the past in model steamboats to drive the propeller shaft. I don't think I'd like to use a pair of mesh gears because of the noise that they make. So as I said, this is the easy option, option one. And if I did use gears or chain, I could build a counter shaft mechanism below the bed plate, which would drive the propeller shaft. I don't think I'm going to do it that way though, it's far too complicated and unnecessary and I'm assuming that this is going to be put into a boat. And I really don't want to cut down the flexibility of use on this engine. I think I'm going to do it this way, with the cylinders facing each other. That gives me a drive shaft at each end of the engine, which could be used to drive a generator, it could be used to drive a paddle steamer, or a conventional screw type propeller in a model steamboat. Here's a shot of the basic components, so you get some sort of an idea of the practicalities of the layout. And the rest of the bits are in my plastic box as usual. These are the lower cylinder covers, with the piston rod gland pre-machined. And I'm temporarily fitting the gland nuts in place just so I don't lose them. Eventually they will need to be removed. Some graphited yarn will be wound around the piston rods and then the gland nuts will be refitted. When building oscillating cylinder steam engines, there's a really good way to do it, and there's a really bad way to do it. These trunnion pins that go into the cylinder port face and through the standard need to be very accurately fitted. I'm only fitting them at the moment for the purposes of the video, and they're only finger tight. So here's my proposed layout. The cylinders will be back to back, and they will all oscillate very merrily in the middle of the engine. And who knows, this arrangement may even reduce some of the vibration from the reciprocating masses. Here's the arrangement of the piston rods and the big ends, temporarily fitted to the original crank pin, which I'm not going to use. 
and here's the complete assembly fitted into the four lower cylinder covers. This episode is just about the layout of the engine and getting to know it. I'm using my scriber followed by a felt tip pen to illustrate that I'm going to cut off the ends of both of the standards, but I won't be doing this for a while yet. I'm showing this clip, but it's out of sequence. As you can see, I've been doing a bit of fettling of the castings. I'll show this in detail in the next episode. A couple more layout options. I could put the engines face to face like this and machine a link piece to join the two ends of the crankshaft. Or I could fit the engines together like this. All I would have to do is make another crank web. Or I could put the engines face to face and use the flywheel to join the crankshafts, but that's not a good idea in the slightest. The favourite is still with the cylinders next to each other. I just need to make a much longer crank pin. Another option would be to put the engines side by side like this and replace the flywheels with a tooth belt pulley. But I don't like that either. And I could do it this way, by making a central column to support the engines, but once again, it looks pretty horrible. It could be practical though if you wanted to use twin propeller shafts, that way with the engines contra-rotating, with individual control over each side, that could be interesting, but no, it's too complicated. So finally, I have arrived at a decision. I'm going to make it so the cylinders are sat in the middle like this. The cylinders will be very close to each other, not touching, just very close. And I think the whole thing will look quite good when it's running. Mission accomplished, this is going to be the layout. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.